Hello you demons and happy Halloween! Today I'm going to be making an alcoholic drink that I thought of that I named the Poison Apple. Now there are probably a thousand variations of it, but you know what? This one's going to be ours. As well as making this drink, I'm going to tell you guys and talk to you about how it is being a scary maze actor. Now, of course, with it being an alcoholic drink, don't drink this if you're under 21. And if you are over 21, make sure to be responsible with that. I'm looking at you. You're responsible. All right, so step one with this poison apple thing, it's not gonna be a poison apple without some like red poison to it. I have raspberry syrup here and we're gonna pour this around the glass and we're gonna rim the glass with sugar. Some sugar. All right, so we got our sugar inside of our glass. We got our sugar on top of our plate. <laughs> so we're gonna use this plate as our sort of like syrup holder. Once it's nice and syrupy around the rim, just like that, we're gonna get this and we're gonna put it around this plate right here, gonna roll it, get all that sugar on there, you know. First off, I gotta say, like, when I was going in there, I was expecting to laugh like 24 seven, every single scare that I did. But after a while, it kind of became like a, Kind of like a job, you know, it's it's really weird to explain, but it's like kind of like greeting people to a cashier, like, hi, welcome to Chili's. It became something as easy as that, you know, it was like, ooga booga, and then they just get scared, and then you're just like, you just go straight back to like, just being grounded back into your corner, and at least for me. So. For our next thing, we're gonna be adding Stolenakia Vodka. This one is my favorite just because it's really smooth. Um, when I was 21, I tried it <laughs> and it was really good. For our measurements, I'm gonna get, we'll do, we'll do a little over half of uh, 0.1 liter. I'm sorry, I can't get you better measurements like with ounces and stuff. This is the best I can do. Thank you, college. For supplying this i'm using it for alcohol i hope you know i'm doing very responsible things with this and we're just going to add this into the drink that may have been a little too much but you know what we're big boys we're big boys now and we're gonna go with the mistakes that we have oh god <laughs> so now that we got our uh two shots of vodka <laughs> poured we are gonna add some of this handcrafted sour apple mixer uh this is a cocktail mixer from uh i don't know am i allowed to say brands from brand so we're gonna add i'd say just eyeball it probably enough to like fill a good halfway up i personally like this because it's a little more sour we are gonna get a little bit of the raspberry syrup that we actually put on the rim into the drink itself so now, for the rest of the drink, we are gonna get our sparkling ice lemon lime. Um, I decided to go with lemon lime because it keeps the nice, uh, I guess, sweetness, like the citric acid taste to the poison apple. What is a poison apple without its worm inside? Ooh. And we got a little guy right here. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna call that the poison apple. Now, this is my first time drinking it, so I may have completely destroyed this drink and this is going to taste awful or this might actually be really good. Without any uh, further ado, let's bottom up. That is dangerous. That is dangerous. I would not recommend drinking any of this if you have work tomorrow, like I do, <laughs> or if you're operating heavy machinery. You guys saw how much alcohol I poured in there, right? I taste 0% of that. Now, of course, you can make the argument, oh, but you added so much of that, uh, that sour apple mixer. Yeah, yeah, I did. But you know, you saw how much alcohol I added. It's super smooth. Like I said, Stolenakia did not disappoint. I would highly suggest doing that. Demon's Corner Poison Apple, whatever I just did. I, I couldn't get you the exact measurements, unfortunately, because I don't have professional barkeeper stuff. I have measuring cup for baking and stuff. Out of all the drinks that I've had, is, this one's actually the best drink I think I've had. But now we can enjoy a drink and I can tell you guys stories while I progressively get drunk about being a horror movie, horror movie, horror actor. <laughs> I remember one day, like when we were all gathered around over at our job, I was like, all right, everybody good luck on the scare floor. And like, everybody was like, I like blew their mind. They're like, oh my God, this is a scare floor. <laughs> we're just Monsters Inc. Hmm, we scare because we care. Funny enough, the place I work for actually gets a lot of their funds and donates it to like charities. 
Oh my God, I gotta tell you about this one story, hold on. I saw these people walk in and I was like, all right, you know, another scare. As I pop out to scare this person, I go and then she screams. But before she screams, she gets her mask and she goes, yeah! And then she like covers herself back up and I was like, what was that? That what, why? You literally, that is what the mask is there for. So you don't scream your germs into my eyes. I just remember being like, Internally, like, oh my god, my eyes. <laughs> but in character, I, I had to be in character. It felt awful. I I'd say that was the most unsatisfying scare. I'd say pros of working at a horror maze. You get to scare people and you get some of the most genuine reactions. Like, I have seen people look like they're about to be stabbed and have had like the most horror movie of screams. So in that department, scaring people. Super satisfying. Um, I guess number two would be just meeting people. So one of the weirdest things that I noticed working at the horror maze is that you meet some of the kindest people. Of course, you're gonna have your occasional like weirdos who are like, I'm scared because I like scary. And then just like stare off and you're like, oh, okay. But nobody really does that. I've definitely scared some guys who come in and they're like super beefy and they're just like, they like have the straightest of faces and then as soon as I slam the can down next to them they jump and then they're just like and they just try to go and keep a straight face walking back and I'm like don't don't try to hide it man don't try to hide it. I saw you jump and if anything it's the tallest people that are actually the biggest scaredy cats however because it's such a good job there of course are gonna be some cons so the most obvious one you might get hit <laughs> that's just straight up you might end up just getting hit there was this one time where these people came into my room and they were just like, I can already tell they were already kind of like tipsy and they were stumbling in. I'm like, okay, well, all right. I mean, I guess if you're in here, I guess I got to scare you. So I went out, scared them. Everything went fine until this one drunk guy just like leaned back. And then I got like almost infant slapped in the head. I, I only say infant slapped because he hit me with the force of an infant. I just, I just remember getting so peeved at that and I was like, listen man, you gotta get out because I don't want any of my coworkers getting hit by that guy. So I figured I'd get him out before he can like hurt somebody else. And you know, I went over, told my boss and then it became this weird scenario. So <laughs> I heard about it afterwards, but after I told my boss, they were like, oh, the doctor got hit, the doctor's hit. And I was like, what the heck? So they treated it as if like somebody shot me, <laughs> which I think is actually really good on them because it shows that they're taking these things very seriously. But I just remember being like, oh wow, this was like a whole operation. They hunted the guy down. They looked at all the footage, reviewed it, reversed it. And they were like, yep, that's him. And now he's never allowed to go back to the hunt, which leads me to my next point. Horror maze etiquette. One, do not go into the horror maze trying to be super mean or buff or be like, yeah, I'm the biggest guy out there. Cause you're don't do that. You no, you're not impressing anybody. Like, whenever we go into work, we have fun scaring people, and it's fun to be scared, even act scared. Usually, the actors will feed off of that, and then you'll have an even better time. But when you walk in there, like that one guy who, just like, straight face. Not only do you look like a weirdo who probably doesn't scream on roller coasters, but you also just look like you're trying to prove something, and it's just very. It does. It creates like a negative, you know, relationship between you and the scarer. And I know it's it's like a very <laughs> weird concept here. I feel like I'm a representative for Monsters Inc. or something. Whatever you do, please do not go into a maze drunk or high on a substance. Literally, those are some of the most annoying people, just because they're a danger to actors. But also, you can stumble in and hurt something, like or yourself because there's a lot of corners and edges and uneven ground and stuff like that. So you kind of like gotta be somewhat with yourself to like go through and like go on the ramps and things like that. Or like some of the floors in my place drop like half an inch. So it's like, don't, don't do that. Cause not only are you gonna ruin, you know, the whole experience of being scared and going through the maze, but you're gonna hurt yourself or somebody else. So just like, just skip it, do it after the maze, go watch a movie or something where you're not like interacting with people. The next biggest one <laughs> would probably have to be, don't, don't point out the scares. So like, there's a lot of people who go in there and they're like, oh, there's a guy around this corner. Oh, watch out, there's a guy around the corner. It, and it just like ruins the scare for everybody else. You know, there are some people, I've seen some people even get mad at the people who point it out in their group that are like, dude, come on, stop, you're ruining it. And like, yeah, 
It's true. Don't be that guy who says, oh, there's a scare right over there. Because other people go there to get scared. You know, why else would people pay like $300 over at Universal Studios? But anyway, that's my tidbit about um, horror maze etiquette. Um, be nice. Actors aren't going to hurt you unless you go to like 17th Door or McKamey Manor, which I think is shut down. Then, yeah, they're going to hurt you. <laughs> but, but at usual mazes, they're not going to hurt you. Oh, and if you are looking to go into being a scare actor, by all means, go do it. It's an experience that you definitely got to try out for yourself. But also, don't go in there thinking it's going to be all like sunshine and rainbows. Rainbows. <laughs> some people don't actually get paid. Some people are like volunteers at some horror houses and stuff like that. Not horror houses, horror houses. There's two R's in that one. But next time you go into a maze, like tell the tell the actors like, oh damn, you're doing a good job. Because they'll take that and they'll that'll get them through the day. Their next scare is gonna be like, yeah, yeah, thank you, bro. And they're gonna just keep scaring it. It's kinda like a pay it forward, but <laughs> your next person is gonna get even more scared than the one that you did. And it's gonna inspire the actor. I guess it was a good idea adding the worm at the bottom. This guy's good. I love gummy worms, by the way. You know what? I like this thing so much. I'm probably just gonna make myself another one. Anyways, I try to. I'm. I mean, I'm just trying to make this video kind of short because I understand everybody's got something to do on Halloween. You know, whether it be going out to that Halloween party or going out trick or treating with your kids or maybe you yourself going out trick or treating. I don't judge. <laughs> that was the most burp like burp I've ever heard. There was this one time where I remember going out and like seeing somebody come by, and I was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna get them. And then as I ran out and I scared them, I look over to my right and then I remember seeing somebody in a wheelchair and just being like, oh, hi there. I did not see them. They just came out of nowhere. I, they, if anything, they jump scared me a little bit. And so then I ended up like focusing my attention on them because you know, everybody pays. So I, I don't want to just exclude somebody because they're disabled or something like that. Like I, these, these scares are rated E for everyone. So <laughs> everybody's going by. And then I finally am doing the thing where I go around my table that has like a fake corpse on it and I look, I don't know why I did air quotations around fake corpse. It really is a fake corpse. <laughs> so as I'm going through, I'm like s slowly getting closer and I snarl and then I see the look of pure terror in this woman's eyes as she turns around, <laughs> sees me and she started wheeling as fast fast as she could out of there. Like her boyfriends weren't even pushing her. She was doing it herself and she was like running into the guy's ankles in front of her. And I was like, oh, I was so confused because it was like satisfying and funny because I scared her, but it was also like, oh, oh, <laughs> one of those sort of situations. I remember just going back to my corner and being like, was what I did bad or was it fair? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get through the night. <laughs> there was this one time where it was like my second day there. I was just having fun, you know, scaring people in the mood, just doing things. And then there's this one dad who comes in with his daughter and he's like holding her. And I was like, that's strange. Usually it's the other way around. And so this dad's like hugging his daughter, walking through. And when I jump out to scare the both of them, it was like a splitting image of the dad and the daughter, like, screaming the exact same way, looking the exact same. And I was like, wow, there was one, no DNA test needed. And two, I, I was like, I did that. I made that grown man look like his daughter screaming. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy the poison apple back at your place and have a great Halloween. And I hope you guys enjoyed the stories. If you did, please leave a like down there below. Don't forget to comment what your favorite story was. Actually, comment down below what your scary story is. Maybe you have a really good satisfying scare that you did or maybe you have an experience you want to talk about. Feel free to do so in the comments. Um, don't forget to subscribe for more Demon's Corner content and I hope you guys all have a great uh, Halloween. Bye guys, stay spooky.